Uh, we're responding to comments. Raptor, I want to become a heavy duty mechanic, but I'm wondering if I need my own work truck and my own tools. I also don't know how to get started. I barely have any experience around big vehicles. I have only worked a little bit on small cars. Just get out and start working on big stuff. That's what I did. I would recommend if you can get a job, clean up kit or wash bay kit or, I hear this a lot now too, and I've noticed in the comments, I hear this a lot. A lot of people have a hard time starting out in this trade because you, if you find like on a local level, it's pretty tight knit. A lot of the mechanics out there, I don't know, when we're looking for an apprentice or something, a lot of times it ends up being a friend or a family member, family friend, or somebody, you know, maybe one of your customers, kids or something like that. Like a lot of times it ends up being someone close in the industry already. So it's kind of like you got a bit of an unfair disadvantage if you're coming from the outside, not knowing anyone. I ended up getting my first job in heavy duty through a friend. He was in the same position. He got his job through connection that was looking for some kind of laborers at a, or help at the quarry that we were working at at the time. And then he got a job there. And then he's like, hey, they're looking for an apprentice. You should apply. I applied and I, I got the job. And that was after aviation. I left aviation to take that job. And I just went there just to be a oil changer, helper, guy around the shop, general kind of maintenance but i wasn't ticketed or anything i was a level zero apprentice i had no experience on equipment i had my previous aviation experience which was you know sheet metal bending and disassembling gearboxes and rotor heads and that kind of stuff i didn't do anything on this you know, i did that for four years out of high school that's what i started in getting into the heavy trades i wanted to get into it and then when that opportunity came up i I jumped on it and I, you know, kind of left one career after getting ticketed in that to start uh, this. It's the hardest part though about uh, about getting into this trade is it is, it can be kind of clicky, but if you want a job bad enough, do what Carson did. He just kept calling people and irritating the shit out of them until they decided to hire him. Basically show up ready to work, whatever job you want to get. If you know they start at seven o'clock, be there at 6.45 when everyone's showing up and you can give them a resume still, sure, but look like you're ready to work. Go there every day, because that's what when, that's what I did. Seriously, when I when I left the quarry, things kind of slowed down. I actually got laid off from there. I, I didn't choose to leave at the time, but I was the most expendable guy because I was the most inexperienced. Who were they going to let go? I left there. I needed a job and I wanted to work somewhere. I didn't want to just work anywhere. It's one thing to want a job somewhere. It's another thing to want a career somewhere, right? So you can kind of feel out when guys are looking around. Do they just want a summer job or do they want? to invest into a career. Like Carson wants to do this, let's say. I'm more likely to hire the guy who's less experienced but wants to wants to work with me and wants to do this than the guy who's got three years but he's just kind of handing out resumes everywhere and trying to just, just get a job, let's say, you know? I don't know, I want the guy who wants to be here every day. I want the guy that want to call him and say, hey man, we gotta actually start at five tomorrow. I'm gonna tell you a story. My opa told me when he wanted to work at, a, at the pulp mill in their town and call this whatever old mentality that it doesn't apply anymore. I don't really care because the thing is it's worked for me in the last five, 10 years. But he showed up every day in the morning with a lunch packed, ready to work, work boots on when all the other guys showed up. And he applied every day and they got essentially sick of just having them show up and not be on the clock and, and whatnot. They just were like, well, you know what, you're here. Half the guys, you know, or whatever, three guys every day are calling in sick and all that. Well, you got a guy here every day, we'll just hire him. So that's what they did. They hired him, showed up every day, right? I mean, that shows your commitment that you actually want to be there. That's, that's, that's where I get that mentality from. Anyways, as far as needing your own work truck and your own tools, when you're starting out, you don't, you don't really need that. Like, yeah, I have a basic set of hand tools. I wouldn't let that stop you from getting a job anywhere. You're gonna start as a wash boy or of whatever, like sweeping up gar like, uh, garbage in the shop and taking them out. Like, you don't need tools for that. And really, when you do get started, a lot of those places, you can borrow what you need until you have the means to buy. Because they're not expecting a first year apprentice to go and buy a $250,000 setup of tools and trucks and all that stuff, right? That's a lot. Yeah, that comes later, you know. Join our network, come along with me. Let's go, get in the fucking truck.